Welcome aboard Kate and Zandi's time travel explorations. Before we get started, I must go over a few simple safety tips. Number one, under no circumstances should any passenger leave the time travel machine because you will be left behind and you will surely die from falling asteroids or vol volcanic activity. Um, number two, please no eating, drinking, or smoking during this trip. And number three, please enjoy your once in a lifetime travel experience throughout the Precambrian era. Thank you. Now would be an excellent time to fasten your seatbelts because at this moment we will be traveling at approximately 70 trillion light years per second, which is pretty fast. And we're off. Ah, whoosh! We have just traveled back in time over 4 billion years and covered three different eons. This period accounts for 87% of geologic time. Although the Precambrian period is fairly difficult to understand, I'm confident my tour guiding skills will lead us to success. And folks, on your left, you will see the Earth forming from dust and gas orbiting the sun. The surface of the Earth is not, is not exactly an ideal place for you to live and thrive on during the early Precambrian era. But rest assured, we're okay because we have a super awesome time machine equipped with an asteroid four shield. Um, there are oceans of liquid rock and boiling sulfur, and there are massive impact craters everywhere. As you can see, volcanoes are constantly blasting off, and asteroids bombard the Earth almost all the time. Some scientists believe that an asteroid as large as planet Mars hit the Earth near the beginning of the Hadean era, completely smashing and melting the Earth, and that this collision formed our moon. There are no traces of rock from this early era. Only rocks on the moon could possibly be that old. Also, any life that did live in this time period would be short destroyed shortly after creation. Ah, here we are, about a billion years after the formation of the Earth. Earth. At this time, everything has started to cool off and a global ocean has formed from the cooled water vapor. The air is mostly made up of nitrogen and there are regularly clouds and rain. As you can see, there is lava, lava almost everywhere. Many small islands are formed from the active volcanoes and these are the only land masses in existence. Occasionally, the small islands will collide with each other to form larger islands. Eventually, these larger islands will collide to form Pangaea and even the cores of the continents we know today. The first forms of life are created here, and they are small blue-green algae that are in the ocean. Sorry people, there is no life formed on land quite yet. Well, here we are, about 700 million years ago, near the end of the longest time period in geologic history. Finally, there are now two supercontinents, one visible across the equator on one side of the Earth and another large mass on the other side. Once again, these huge masses of land were formed by collisions of many, many smaller islands that were created by volcanoes. As you can see, plant life in the ocean is thriving. Some sing singular celled creatures and organisms are beginning to appear and some of the creatures even had a nucleus. Alrighty, unfortunately folks, it's time for us to go back to 2010. So buckle up, cause here we go! Alright, we made it! Thank God! Don't forget to visit our gift shop where you'll find some awesome fossils, metamorphosized rocks, and eroded rocks. Right now our bestseller is an Eticarian jellyfish fossil from the Precambrian time. These make great stuffy, stocking stuffers, so get them while they're hot. Yeah. I hope everyone enjoyed their trip to the Precambrian era. Come back really soon. We miss you already. And thanks again. Goodbye.